Hello, I'm Steve. Thank you for visiting the Patio Heat Channel, where we provide visual concepts of infrared heating as well as tips for ideal patio comfort. Check out our patioheat.com website for sales and more information. Please tap that like button if you find this video useful as it helps others find our channel. Now let's get heating. All right, so here we have this uh, pole barn and it's uh, got a patio section here and um, this is a residential application and uh, let's just go right into the dimensions. You can see that we have here three different uh, seating spaces. We have uh, reclining, a dining, and then a bar stool seating. And also this is gonna be a cook area here. So there'll be a barbecues around here and probably sinks and et cetera um, in that area. Um, let's go into the dimensions here. Dimension wise, I have a couple of dimensions I'm gonna place here. So I have a uh, edging here at uh, 10 foot 10 and then the height of the start uh, the highest point of the uh, ceiling would be about uh, 14 4 and then the low section here will be at 12 4 here and then um, you can obviously see that we have some heaters placed here the heaters um, I should mention that there are some I'm gonna guess 2 by 10s but they could be 2 by 12s or 2 by 8s here I'm not quite sure but I placed some 2 by 10s up here and as you can see, we've got some SunPak units. These are gas-fired uh, infrared dynamic brand SunPak S34s or TSH models. They could be stainless steel and they could be uh, black. Um, that's what they come available in. And you can see here I have these placed at 9 foot 9. This is called 9 foot 10 off of the finished floor. Um, from the center point here, I have it at 4 foot on the out, from the outside edge here. The starting point and then each heater thereafter is at eight feet center so eight feet eight feet and then you'll notice here on this bar stool area here I've offset these two at uh, uh, two feet center from this point here to this point here and I think that's about it and I think this should be around four feet off this edge here as well um, the reason I offset those is just because of the bar stool seating here and these particular models here now you could possibly raise them up maybe uh, so that you have the minimum clearance the minimum clearance would be from combustibles the combustible edge would be from here to the ceiling and I shouldn't say to the ceiling sorry to the um, joist here or rafter here and that would be a minimum of 14 inches from this edge to the top that would be your minimum clearance. I would go probably with the maximum and then I would probably for sure make these two units TSHs so that there's two stages. You can take it down to um, 25,000 uh, 25, BTUs or go all the way up to the 34. There's just those two choices. It's, it's either 34 or 25. So um, yeah, that's what I would choose on these particular units just because of the fact that they're on the bar, bar stool side and standing um, area here. Um, and again, I offset those so that you get a better um, heat ray on the outside edge here. We are gonna miss this chair here, but um, again, that's what I would do. And also you might consider um, lowering these units a little bit more for this space over here. I would prefer to see it no higher than nine feet, but 10 feet would be okay. Um, as long as that's uh, the, the minimum height that you go. Um, another thing here, you can see I put some blocks in here. They're just these white um, pieces here. And these are two by sixes that I used and I put a block between and then mounted the heater where I needed it to be at that 20, uh, 48 inch mark. Um, this is the maximum length, 21 inches on that bar, this bracket here that goes down. So this particular item right here and then as you can see here this one doesn't fit so what I would recommend doing is taking a um, going down to a uh, metal supply house and pick up a half inch by one inch bar stock or channel stock and then drilling my own holes you can get it in stainless most places and or um, just steel and then paint it black if that's what you choose to order a black unit and then use your existing brackets this one here and this one here but Oh, what I was going to say is, you know, once you get the total length, line up your holes, you know, with the um, <clears throat> original bracket and drill your holes in the place that you need them. Same over here. 
and then um, have your longer bracket or you could just extend it by placing an extension piece on here if you feel like it and that would work for uh, these units here and if you wanted to lower the heaters I wouldn't lower more than that probably that eight more inches you know nine ten inches I guess um, and if you lowered them you'd have to extend you know make an extension for this bracket or as well so you might just purchase some more steel and go the whole length so it looked clean so all right I think that's about it as far as the dimensions go and the explanation of that you can see I, I think I have these uh, rafters in approximately the right position I could be off a little bit um, but we're still going to use the bottom edge of this rafter as your clearance point here from here down minimum of the 14 inches or maximum length of the bar or even further to get a better um, heat footprint and I believe this is in a colder climate too so um, you really want to get as much heat as you can on the seating area uh, now this is going to extend the heat, you know, the season for your outdoor um, occupation or occupying this space here. Um, it won't cover, you know, probably when you get in the 50s or something of that nature, um, you probably won't have enough heat. So this is a cold climate area. So I just want to make sure that you're aware that it's not going to heat up the very, very cold you know climates when you start dropping below 50s you may or may not be okay with that um, just depends on your acclimation to the weather so if you're you know used to colder weathers it might be just fine but if you're like me and I moved out to this cold climate area I probably would have to be acclimated to that uh, type of environment for some time all right let's go ahead and look at the footprint of heat so footprint of heat you can see here we get roughly a 12 by 10 footprint and we have really nice overlapping uh, here. That's why you know I wanted this amount of heaters so that we can get good overlapping and a, a almost uniform uh, coverage throughout this whole entire space here. And as you can see here with the bar still seam, um, you know it's it's a little closer when you're sitting up a little higher. Now that may or may not be an issue, so that's why I'm saying I would recommend you know possibly getting the uh, two stage um, units over here. So, and then with that offset, you can see that we're hitting the outside edge here fairly well, and you're not directly underneath it right here. You are almost directly underneath it over here. However, um, you know, it's, it's offset a little bit, so it's not going to be too uh, intense on you, I don't believe. So, all right. Well, I hope this has helped. If you're looking for some assistance with your outdoor heating application and you would like us to review your plans, please send your information to designs at patioheat.com and please give us a like a thumbs up like strike there because uh, YouTube doesn't recognize us because we don't monetize we don't advertise and the only way that they will uh, promote us is by you giving us that thumbs up thank you very much and have a great day